Hello! Welcome to Man Manga Boy's Manga Reading Log. I've been like, not super interested in reading manga lately. Isn't that crazy? I think it kind of is. Sakamoto Days is a really good manga. I love this series. I could not put this down when I was reading. We continue our little assassination conquest arc, which I've been really enjoying a lot. Um, Sakamoto's team is kind of just doing their own thing, just wrecking stuff. We see a girl who's really a big fan of Sakamoto. And you know, of course, Shin and her are duking it out for number one Sakamoto fan boy. We have this guy who's got a little ear flap hat and then he puts the ear flap hat together and then he's like, I'm ready to be real. And so he does that. Shin uses his future sight powers, which is really cool, but mainly this is a Shin volume. A lot of Shin development here, which is fine. Uh, you know, we're just trying to get all the requirements. I forget their flags or something like that or tails um, of the other team. So that way they can pass on to the next round. It's been a pretty exciting read, but um, you know, nothing huge in, for, in, in, in the form of like plot development, just a ton of really cool action and things like that, which is nice. Speaking of action, oh, it's Dragon Ball Super. We get a lot of backstory this week in my reading logs, I gotta say. So the Bardock, father of Goku, he helped fight against Gas in the invading um, heaters. I don't know, did they have a race? Well, whatever the race is, yeah, he helped fight against them. Anyway, so yeah, he defended a town of um, Ceruleans against the Heaters and Frieza's invading army, even though they were sent, I guess, to invade there. Um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, we got Goku in the thing. We got Bardock. Bardock's always really cool to see. We got big giant monkeys fighting each other, but Bardock really is not in it very long at all. And then Granola's like, what, what did you tell me, Minato, that Bardock was, 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 he helped save us? And then he's like, want to keep it a secret? And then I'm like, okay. But yeah, only that much is about Bardock, which is too bad because you can see Bardock is like right there on the cover, like looking like he's the whole thing. And it's like, really, there's that much left of no Bardock. And you going to do that to us? We also get the official colors of Vegeta and Ultra Eagle form in the back, which is very cool. Um, you know, Gas, of course, makes a wish so that way he can compete against our main man, the king, the emperor, um, Granola. But also, Vegeta gives Granola a sensu bean. What? Vegeta? Yeah, so that's actually what happens. I know it's like not super exciting. This arc is really a cool arc. I, I'm making it sound a lot more boring than it is. I was really actually a big fan of all the fighting because of these are two characters that we actually don't see fight before, uh, or at least not extensively. So that was very interesting to see. They're using like instant transmission, like a couple of bosses. I mean, this is just spirit gun. That's like a sick spirit gun uh, from Yuri Meshi. And, um, you know, we get some really cool fighting with some kicks. Uh, you know, the I wouldn't say that the action is quite the level of Toriyama, but it's not bad either. It's pretty good. I would say this is like above average um, paneling here, uh, especially this scene here. You can see a kick. He backs off and then you can kind of see him slide and he keeps sliding backwards. At least that's what everything's making me look. And he's getting in a running position to go get him. And he teleports up to fight him and then, you know, uh, then he's behind him. And so it was an interesting way to see them fight with all this instant transmission stuff because it, it is kind of like how Dragon Ball does it, but Dragon Ball doesn't usually use instant transmission, which literally makes you move in like an instance. And usually you can't do that, but because they are the strongest warriors on the universe or galaxy, whatever they're able to. We also get to see a return of uh, Tian Shinhan's move where he makes doppelgangers. It looks like um, Granola has his own kind of form where he makes a few of them. When he does it though, he does split his energy apart, which is why Tian doesn't do it as often as he used to. Um, also, Tian doesn't get any spotlight like he used to either. That's another reason why he doesn't use it. Um, but we ended off with Gas getting like another power up. So that's cool. Uh, Ayashimon, this was actually a little bit better than what I thought it was going to be. Um, we get some flashbacks about our little Candleman. Um, I can't, I don't know what type of demon he is. We get to see this cool little doggy. Um, you know, that's their boss and she turns into a doggy. Uh, we lose against this man right here, Enma. So that was interesting. And we kind of train and try to get more demons on our team. So we go to the cloth demons. Uh, that's a cloth demon. He's really cool. 
and we're trying to get him to go and he's like yeah i'll join but like these guys suck so like either leave them or or you know we ain't joining or we will join but like we ain't gonna accept them we're gonna fight them so they can prove themselves and i'm like okay that's cool uh they're called the todoroki alliance you know from uh my hero academia and so he's like whoa biker gang and then this guy's like skitty boy about it um one of the guys here is really funny um I, I can't remember what his name is his name's like fat hog or something like that but he like literally uh loves his harley so much so he uses it as kind of like a trap goes through the ground and you know then he has to fight the demon underground what's the what's his name his name is uh waku or wan yudo they call him um i don't know i don't remember what they called him i thought he had a nickname that was sillier than that maybe not anyway so they have to fight they they try to outsmart and do all these other things this was a more interesting read. I was actually liking this a lot more than um, where we started with uh, Ayashimon Volume 1, but uh, Volume 2 is still not super good. I'm not like, oh, I gotta read this like you said, like Hell's Paradise was. Like, I was like hooked into Hell's Paradise. This is just a good read. Um, if you liked Hell's Paradise, I do recommend at least checking this series out because, you know, it's obviously by the same author. You'll probably find something here that you like. I would just rate it as okay right now. I can still understand why it was canceled. I heard the third volume is uh, pretty good, uh, so hopefully it is, but um, totally understandable. Uh, Mashal actually has gotten better too. Mashal is one that I think is actually probably overall worse than uh, or equal to Ayashimon. I don't know. They're kind of different things. So it would be hard to compare them. Um, but, you know, Mashal has been actually pretty good lately. Uh, we get to get this cool little alligator boy. He's obviously some sort of a mage because he's got the lines on his face, but he's a lot of fun. Uh, we also see a little bit more into the brothers like commune or grouping so they're talking to each other about it we get to see a little bit more about it which is nice we get a flashback about mash and how he's been holding himself back because his dad was like oh mash you're giving me a massage thank you my good boy and then like mash is like breaking his neck and he's like sorry i can't hear you dad something's gotten real noisy and he's like breaking his back by using his, his hand so um, it teaches MASH to hold back and so that way he can kind of fit in a little bit better but now MASH doesn't know how to not hold back so that's kind of what we're up to now so everybody's training with one of the three great seinen I mean sages or wizards um, that being the headmaster um, Wahlberg um, the girl who's like this healing girl her name's Sakura and Wahlberg's name is actually um, Naruto and then the last one is of course Sasuke um, I mean, Eden Zero, I mean, that's his name, right? Innocent Zero, oh my goodness. You know, you get all these names mixed up from these other shows where they have the exact same similar things. It, you know, it gets a little confusing. <laughs> I'm making a joke uh, on how I think um, MASH is a little bit uh, recycling. Anyways, this is still a decent arc, even though it's heavily recycled from other series. Uh, I am still interested to see how MASH ends. It does seeing that we're entering the final arc. The author mentioned even earlier on or or maybe later on that he was like getting really hard, is getting tired and hard to make this series now. Um, but he's, you know, still very thankful that people are involved in getting the series. So it's glad to see that we're wrapping up because I really cannot imagine this series going on forever, like something of uh, Dragon Ball or Naruto standards or even too long, like how, uh, Prince of Tennis went to like 40 volumes. I don't think this has the legs for any 40 volume series or anything like that. It was a current family on the other hand, probably does. Uh, this is a five, volume five. We get to find out more about this guy. I know what you're thinking. Wow, there's a ghost in this series. No, he's just like, you guys ever hear that uh, show called Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible? Well, that's this guy, okay? He has the invisibility power where he can't, you know, people don't notice him because he's such a low presence. Um, and I thought that was really funny. And he's like uh, trying to get a girlfriend, but no girl notices him. So he gets her this bread that it's very difficult to get, but everybody lets him get it because like nobody can see them cutting the line. So he cuts the line and he goes, I get this bread. He gets this bread for this girl because she's got an F cup bra. And then she's like, um, you can have my melon bread. And then he's like, for real, thanks. And it's this guy who honestly, I really thought it was, I thought it was this guy from Ayashimon, uh, the main character character here. Let me see if there's a picture of his face on the front so that way you can compare it. That was him. Okay, so look at his face. He's got the bandage on. He's got the hair like that. Okay, I thought that was, I thought literally that was him. Okay, this guy right here. They look identical. I think it is supposed to be a nod to him. Um, so I was like, what? From Ayashimon, you're here? And then it was like, nope. And so that, that was pretty funny. Um, yeah. 
So he deletes that biatch, which is he's been using his spy techniques to take pictures of this girl because he's crushing on her. I was like, damn, this dude kind of fucked. And, um, you know, he has another story at the end uh, because he needs to get his license renewed. And I guess if you're a bronze rank, you need to do at least one mission a month. Otherwise, you don't get the pass. And so that's too bad. I think a lot of the reason why I like this series so much is probably because how the world is like kind of explored, which is really nice. I think they do a really good job kind of slowly introducing you to it um and the characters in it as well so i do have a really good time actually reading this i don't think it's like one of my favorite series ever or anything like that but it's certainly not one that you should write off which is something that i was planning on doing when i first read the, the volume one but this series is actually a lot of fun i think it's worth picking up if you're interested in spy stuff helk volume two this series is also really good so we get, get more backstory on uh, like backstory city with these volumes um uh, with uh with Helk because Helk has to um he's like wow these humans have uh wings because they're awakened and then the guy's like yeah we're awakened heroes and Helk was, used to be my best friend but now he's setting with you demons so now we're gonna get him too and like um at first he's like not sure how good how bad but anyways he sends Vermillion and Helk off to um this like uh, island kind of in the middle of nowhere and Helk builds like a nice log cabin and they're trying to get off of it so they can get back to the demon realm. And the girl, Vermillion is like, whoa, 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 we can't bring him back to the demon realm. We can't stop Helk. Otherwise he's gonna destroy the demon world. So she's kind of like, ooh, should we stay, should we not? And it turns out that they're on this like village or island that's got these weird monsters maybe um, here and so they're very welcoming and kind to them but uh you know of course a million or vermikins is very like hesitant to allow help back to help with the demons because she thinks that he's actually a hero in the skies who's trying to you know betray the demons um now this villain uh that they're fighting which are the demons fighting the heroes so i guess i shouldn't say villains that makes it sound more confusing more confusing we finally get to see a little bit of a brief flashback between um <laughs> This guy right here, who is a Zudra, he's one of the four emperors, like, what is it? What does he call himself again? Oh yeah, elite lords. Uh, had flashback with him in, v in Vermilion, or as he calls her, Vermikins. And then she went on a hot air balloon once, and then he let go, and then Vermikins went flying away, and he had to save her, and that was pretty silly. Um, but, <laughs> like, uh, also, we finally get to see him getting ready to fight in some action. If you don't remember, um, Zudra has been, like, just chilling in the background with like bandages on and stuff and just like making funny jokes with uh vermilion so i'm really excited to see him kind of get into the fray and see what he's capable of since he's one of the evil owns elite four uh, it should be a very interesting kind of a, a encounter of him versus the heroes last we have six volumes of shaman king as you know i have been reading shaman king very quickly i actually really enjoy shaman king more than i remember uh, I think this series is a lot of fun, a lot of fighting. We get <laughs> more backstory. Uh, well, I'm never going to stop with the backstory, I guess, today. Uh, so, man, did I read any manga in the present or is everything just a flashback this, this week? Um, anyways, so we get a lot of uh, backstory between Yo and his training arc, how he met Anna and how How has been kind of intervened in their life all along. We also get to see the X-Laws um, show up everybody's dying because you know they can and they know they can now so jaco dies uh hororo dies you know it's kind of lame that they just kill everybody off and it's no big deal because ren died and they're like yeah now ren's super strong and everyone's like uh oh well now we gotta power up everyone else otherwise ren's just op so they're powering everyone else up by killing them which is like really lame uh <laughs> But whatever, that's what's happening. But Joko dies and he meets his old master in the afterlife. They go through a nice spiritual journey. We also find out that um, Mickey's uh, two little child shamans that he's been training with the golem, they are actually the son of the person that Joko killed when he was in Chicago or was it New York? I can't remember. Either way, that was really a cool little add on. I forgot about that. We also find that Law, uh, the X-Laws were founded by Lucifer, or this guy right here. He has Lucifer. I forget what his name is exactly. It's not, um, oh shoot. What the heck was his name? Man, I can't remember. It's, I always think of him as Judas because he's kind of like that. Oh, Lucius, <laughs> that's right. Because it is very similar to Judas. So yeah, Lucius has Lucifer and that's why I always can't remember his name because he has Lucifer. And I always think that like he can't be Lucas because that's too similar. 
but he is. And Marco, of course, um, is going to have to fight him. Marco is pretty much now the X-Law leader. But uh, Lucifer, or Lucas calls him Pee-wee, or they used to anyways. And now apparently Lady John is like a project for him, I guess, whatever that means. And so they're fighting each other at the end, which is very interesting and exciting. But there's a huge fight with that golem. It takes forever for them to finish that fight and Joko's um, flashback to get resolved, which I thought was really exciting and good. I did think, I think it's kind of weird because I'm pretty sure Joko doesn't ever get one of these side uh, spine things, which is really dumb. And uh, also there's another thing that I thought was dumb and I, I can't remember what the heck it was though. I know that I think it's dumb that Ryu doesn't end up being in one of the uh, final volume covers because it's got like everybody on it except for Ryu. But I wonder if it also doesn't have Joko now that I'm thinking about it. Because I know it has Yo, um, Ren, and um, Horo Horo on it. But I can't remember who else. It might be Lyzer. If it's Lyzer and, no, and not Joko, I'm probably going to cry. But I remember feeling like really annoyed that it wasn't, uh, you know, Ryu wasn't on it. Because I thought Ryu was like really a funny guy. And he, he is. He's really kind of creepy though. He seems kind of like a pedo, but like, then I have to remember that this guy is like, he's like 14 or 15, something stupid like that. So I'm like, I guess he's not really a pedophile, but like, it's so weird because he's like blatantly a grown man compared to everyone else. Uh, so that's always a blast. Anyways, that's what I read um, this week. Let me know what you guys thought about today's reading log down below. Um, maybe it brings back some memories of a, of a childless story in your past. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's all the Shonen Jump volumes that exist right now. Um, so we are caught up to date on that, which is good. We'll see you next week for a, another reading log as long as I actually read the manga. Because let me tell you, Astro Boy has been just straight out, I think, burning me out in manga. I'm kind of like becoming more interested in comic books instead of manga because I think largely Astro Boy. But we're almost done with that too. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.